Hi, Toby Hodges from Yachting World. Sailing aboard the Nautitech 44. I'm really enjoying myself, actually. One thing I wanted to show at the moment as we are sailing along, close reaching with the Code Zero out, is I think we've done a walkthrough video of this boat before, but not while she's sailing. And I think the real thing to point out here is with aft helm cats, people tend to comment on how, oh, you don't have enough visibility, or oh, you're exposed here. Um, steering right aft but sorry I just I don't buy it I really enjoy having the direct steering straight away we've come out here we sailed with the Jenica sailed with a, um, the self tacking solar jib and yeah in 10 knots 10 to 12 knots of breeze we were doing you know, seven seven and a half knots upwind and now with the code zero out we are making between nine nine and a half knots in 13 knots tree wind and it's rather than the figures it's about the enjoyment you feel this is direct steering you feel each knot of increase of wind each time it goes from 10 to 11 11 to 12 etc you feel that on the rudders you feel connected and you feel the communication with steering the boat which monohull sailors will really appreciate the other thing that people comment on is that you're exposed to uh, to the yeah, well having these little biminis certainly helps against any sun protection and in terms of visibility well I can see pretty clearly through those coach roof windows the other thing is just easy to walk to the other helm and check from there as well so it's easy to walk across from helm to helm and still keep that visibility look at that i leave the helm and then it gets stolen from me everyone everyone wants to steer the boat might go a bit faster now we've got the designer on so yeah this mark lombard design hull and yeah it's a stiff, rewarding, enjoyable boat to sail and, and it really moves along. I mean, look at us. Now, okay, we've got another knot or two of wind, 15 knots of true breeze, nine and a half, almost touching 10 knots with the code zero out, flat water sailing. That's pretty good for a, you know, 11 ton cruising yacht. Really good sized boat as well. Yes, you do get a bit of reflection off that window depending on the sun angle but yeah it's still pretty good visibility you lose that part there uh, where the bulkhead is but as I say you move in you've got it you go inboard yes I know a lot of time you're on autopilot but I enjoy still enjoy sailing it especially when you have nice conditions like this you're actively sailing a boat and getting enjoyment from it you can actually you can feel and see the heel on the boat now as well. We're shifting along here, look. Wake starting to separate from the transoms. So yes, this is a out and out cruising boat, but there's plenty of power and performance in it. Touch 10 knots. And you can see the powerful square top mainsail there. So they can carry that upwind, well, close reaching in up to about 20, 22 knots in flat water. And then you want to be dropping in the reef. So this hexagonal wheel is an option. Um, there's quite a few options on this, aesthetic and, and otherwise. But yeah, you can see compact steering area, easy for uh, a couple to manage the boat 
from the helm here, you've got the, uh, the primary winch here, we've got the sheet for the code zero on at the moment, so it comes from the, from that code zero sail through and all the running rigging lines run through through the actual coast roof, through the turning blocks, back to these clutches into here. And then you've got the main sheet uh, on the aft beam here and the traveller there as well. So red and green lines for the traveller and then the blue for the main sheet itself. So within this area I'm sitting here, by either helm, you can uh, you know, sheet out and you can trim, that sort of thing, all quite approachable. So moving into the starboard hull, there's a few things I just wanted to point out. You, you could watch uh, the walkthrough I did uh, of the first boat, the Grand Mott. Um, but yeah, a few features I wanted to point out. This one has the smart room option, which I really like, you know, for liverboard sailing. It's an adaptable cabin uh, and you can set it up as this one has been as a, as a workroom, as a laundry, um, yeah, extra cold stowage and a really useful yeah workroom and it links into that sail locker as well in there plenty of light and room so if you don't need that extra cabin to to squeeze the guests or kids in then i think this is a really smart area to have well that's why it's called a smart room i guess and from this angle you'll see really it's not it's a it well, that's where we're getting the performance they're not the massive voluminous hulls of some mass production yards um Nautilus still build a lot of yachts. They build, I think, 35 of these a year. But that's, you know, this is a pretty narrow walkway. It's a very different look as well with the, the dark walnut alpy wood. There's plenty of solid wood and it's, yeah, built and finished well. You'll notice it's, you know, we're trucking along at nine knots here and it's quiet. It's quiet here. And it's not that, it's not the big voluminous holes. You're not going to get the bit of thwart ships double berths in here but I mean for me this is plenty roomy enough thank you very much lovely big views plenty of headroom loads of stowage and yeah you take this this uh, smart room option you get this whole hull to yourself uh, with a separate shower in one shower compartment and sink in there and then your head compartment in here noticeably stiff actually so you build this holland decks in one mold put the bulkheads in before demolding it going through jibe now with the code zero it still seems pretty quiet down here those familiar with the new nautitech the open range they know that you know you open out that cockpit area the just have the one big table here and then you just have more of a coffee zone here this owner has gone for a telescopic table so that will lower down it's a bit larger than the fixed one that opens out lowers down makes it fills in as a bit of a day bed area makes sense but yeah otherwise you have this big kitchen which is kitchen galley area that's divided by the bar central uh, concept by Christophe Shadow Langlais who came up with the designer came up with that plenty of cold storage there the option for for a freezer or more cold fridge space in there uh, I really like having a forward-facing desk and nav station I think that's a cracking area to sit and keep a watch do some work uh, with a view forward and then moving into this porthole you see it's different from the first boat we went through in that this has twin double cabins whereas if you want an owner's hull normally an owner's cabin you'd have an owner's hull which would be all of this side without that forward cabin this owner went for an owner's cabin on the starboard side with the smart room layout which I think is quite a good idea really so this one has a heads and shower area separate again so shower aft heads forward shared by these two very light good sized doubles
nine and a half knots code sail say sailing nice and quiet no banging around also plenty of stowage in here I don't know if I showed this before but inboard three tall stowage cabinets before you go into that after cabin this owner has got an optional TV there obviously um, it's got the water maker on here and heating system as well so the heating coming out of vents there both in the saloon galley area and also in the cockpit as well so you can see where the canopy will close off this whole area and you can heat this area for when you're in the colder climes and also the size of that uh, table there so that middle table will lift you can separate those two uh, and there's the option for those to drop down as well to fill in that big area so you can sit I don't know one two three four five six around that um, and then either have fold up director's chairs or there's the stool that goes under the nav station then that easily shifts to here as well good grab rail going up here I did ask about these, they're not uh, rainwater catchers, but they are thinking about integrating those on the next model like they used to on Nautitex of old. This one has uh, eight solar panels, 170 watts each. And you can see how those lines come from the mast here, drop down through those turning blocks. So it's all set up and designed to be easy to handle. Another feature I like is having these steps here. So you've still got the ventilation, still got those opening ports each side on that coach roof. But easy to step up here and get up onto, it's good non-slip up here, get up onto the big flat coach roof area to stack your main. Or even, you know, to have your sunbeds up here or whatever. Check on the sails. And then a massive foredeck area saw the sail sail lock on that starboard side through the workroom another another one same size on this side pulpit seats sit and watch the dolphins oh i'm getting romantic you probably see i, I like this boat if a yacht gets me dreaming of spending more time aboard it, it's doing a good thing and yeah this nautitex doing that 44 is a great size for going you know, coastal or long distance, maybe liverboard cruising. And you can, I could picture myself going across the Atlantic or the Pacific on this boat. Plenty of room to take everything I'd need. And crucially, enjoyable to sail as well. And yeah, I'd always want that. So just before I sell up and, and give up my job, it's yeah, starting price 560,000 euros expat. Yeah, this one, 818 with the lithium batteries, hydronet sails, flexi teeth. A lot of options on this one. Anyway, start saving. Hope you enjoyed the sailing tour on this and see you next time.